So hello friends, welcome back and in this video we are going to see a very famous, very beautiful problem Cardin's algorithm also called as a maximum subarism problem So it was the problem which was asked in many interviews and in my interview as well So starting with the problem statement, yeah, before starting like I've seen it on YouTube like many YouTubers have taught it and many big YouTubers have taught it but they have only do a rectification like they have only walked through the algorithm and nothing thought about the intuition so like i wonder like how they are gaining so much likes and views but yeah what's happening in the youtube i don't know now starting with this that okay what we had is that we have an array of n numbers and we need to find the maximum sub array sum now what is a sub array a sub array is any such array which is contiguous now if i say you that i have the elements as minus 2 1 minus 3 4 minus 1 2 1 minus 5 and 4 then from your dry run with your mind you will clearly say that okay rn uh, maximum sub array sum is this right now uh, when i ask you that how you thought of this so you will say that okay rn i checked all the sub arrays then i computed the sum of all the sub arrays then i gave you the answer which has six now if i write the same algorithm which you said right now so what will happen to find all the sub arrays we have n squared such sub arrays right now how n squared see for every i see for any sub array you can have i and j as its endpoints so how many such i and j endpoints combinations can be there it can be n square combinations now how i'm saying that for every i starting i will have j j j j j which means for every i i will have n j's nearly n j's and how many such i i can have i can have n i's so for n i's i am having n j's in total i can have n square combinations of such i n j pretty fine i am pretty sure that i will have n square such sub arrays and to find the sum of any such sub array i will have o of n time i will iterate from i to j and i will find that okay what is the sum then i will compare all such answers and i will give you the maximum answer so for n square sub arrays having o of n for its sum it will compute as o of n q to find the answer for the maximum sub array sum now you might say okay n cube okay it sounds pretty bad as such so how can i optimize it so when i see the flaw in my algorithm then i check that okay i am finding the n square thing okay fine then i am finding my o of in o of n i am, I am finding my sum so in o of n i am finding my sum then if i can do it in o of one then it would be pretty awesome right so as you know that for any range sum and if i want to recompute it again and again for different values of the range then i use my prefix sum method now what is prefix sum method see prefix sum method is something that you compute the prefix sum of the array and if you want to find the sum of elements from i to j then what you do you do j minus i minus one which means that prefix of j minus prefix of j minus 1 will give you the result of sum of elements from i to j again it is a sub part and it is very important part and you should understand what is prefix sums because in problem b and c in code forces this will help you a lot i mean a lot now to compute the prefix sum array what i will do that i have this array right with me starting with the zero because initially i let it as zero then like always the prefix sum array is initialized with zero in the starting like the first element which i will take then i will add this it will be minus two then i add this minus one then add this minus four then this so zero then this so one so if i say that i need to find the sum from i to j here to here so what i will do it is one minus three plus four which is actually two now if i need to do it like i had this in o of n time but if i need to do the same thing in o of one time using my prefix sums which i've made in the bottom using the blue color then i will do i will just write prefix of j which is this minus prefix of i minus one not i i minus one 
then I will go then I will do 0 minus of minus 2 which will give me 2 and the answer is same so now I can easily say that I will compute my prefix sum then I will check okay what is my prefix sum and with the help of that for all n squares of sub arrays I will find my range sub array of one time so the complexity will be of n square in time but as I use a pre prefix sum sub array so I am increasing my space by o of n now my space is o of n and my o of n square is time very fine now again to optimize it yes we can optimize it now comes the main part which is the cardinal algorithm or you can see the god algorithm why god because it is the very 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 beautiful problem which is asked in like most of the interviews very fine now what is the basic intuition in this algorithm see intuition is pretty fine that for any sub array in your mind it can have a thing that the starting part is negative the starting sub array sum is negative and then the further part sum is positive so is there any point in having a negative sum sub array like any point i'm asking you like if i have this like the example i showed you the negative sum i'm taking as minus 2 and the positive sum as 6 so if i hold like if i had this whole sub array with me minus 2 plus 6 which becomes 4 is there any point in having 4 as my answer when I still know that I can have this sub array with me and it will give me answer 6 so it is pretty sure that th there is no point in having minus 2 with my with me as an answer when I pretty sure that in future I will obtain my answer as 6 so I will obtain the idea from here that although like, it might happen that it might happen that I might have only the up till the part right here I might happen that it might happen that I might not have 6 in my further part so firstly I will have have my prefix sums then I will update my answer first of all I will have my answer as int minimum then at every prefix sum step I will update my answer that what is the maximum of answer right now and the prefix sum obtained so far then I will do what I will do I will transform that prefix sum to 0 so as to compute the answer for further part which means that if I try with this algorithm so my answer will store the final answer which means the maximum sub array sum and to find the maximum part I am initializing with the minimum which means minus infinity now as we do in the prefix sum so we initialize with 0 right then I add minus 2 in it so I will get minus 2 now if you think clearly that minus 2 may be the answer if in one case if my array had only one element which is minus 2 so my answer would be minus 2 so firstly i will update my answer as maximum of answer and this prefix sum which i obtained up till now then i am clearly sure that as the sum is negative so far it will never contribute in my further answer so i will transform that negative part to 0 which means that i will transform this minus 2 to 0 but before transforming i should actually update my answer variable because it might happen that minus 2 is the only maximum answer now i transform it to 0 then i add it to 1 i get 1 i as it is as the sum is positive i update my answer first and i will not transform it to 0 because it is positive and it can result in a bigger answer further then i transform then i add it to minus 3 i got minus 2 although i will check for answer equals to maximum of answer and this minus 2 but actually i have obtained minus I have actually obtained 1 as my answer so answer will not update as such answer will remain as 1 but it is minus 2 so it needs to be transformed to 0 so as to add it to next element which is 4 because I never wanted my negative in my prefix right now 0 plus 4 4 answer will be updated to 4 it is maximum right now but it will never transform to 0 because it is not negative I add it to minus 1, it is 3, answer will not update because it is 4, I add it to 2, it is 5, maximum, I will update my answer to 5, then I add it to 1, it is 6, maximum, I will update my answer as 6, I add it to 5, 1, still, I will not update my answer, but as the number is not negative, so I will not transform it to 0, then I add it to 4, then I get 5, still it is less, so I will not update, 
So as you can see that in my answer I obtained a maximum sub array sum. But as you can clearly see that I used my DP array right here. But if you clearly think a slight bit then what I am finally able to achieve is O of n, o of n time and O of n space. Now it is the same thing which we did in Fibonacci series. What? Okay, uh, I am clearly sure that I cannot reduce this furthermore. It is fine. But anyhow, if I am able to reduce the space, then how awesome would be that? Now, how to reduce the space? Uh, okay. So see, as I am clearly seeing very fine that at every point of like this problem, I am only requiring the last prefix sum. I am not bothered about what happened so far in previous part. I am only bothered about what is the recent most prefix sum. Okay, fine. If I want to have the recent most prefix sum, then I can just instead of having this whole DP array or you can see the prefix array, I can have one variable called prefix. What it will do? I will just check that. Okay, at every point I will have my variable called PRE prefix it is 0 initially I added to this it becomes minus 2 then I will update my answer first then I will update if it is negative if it is negative then I will update it to 0 then again I will do the same procedure I will add this prefix to the a of i then I will add my I will see I will update my answer if it is possible then I will if it is negative then I will transform it to 0 so I hope that you guys have understood it. I have written the same thing that as we know that in the Fibonacci we did the same thing. So we can have the prefix variable rather than this DPRA. Now the code is pretty 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 simple. It is such that that I will have my variable called prefix instead of the array right here. I will have my maximum sum as initialized with int minimum because I personally know that my maximum sum it can be negative as well. So instead of initializing with 0, I will initialize it with int minimum, which means minus infinity. Then I will transform to my whole array. Firstly, I will update my prefix sum because see, in the DP array also, firstly I made it my DP array, right? Then at every stage, I compared my answer with the maximum answer, which means maximum sum is equal to maximum sum, comma prefix sums. Then if my prefix sum is less than 0, then I will transform it to 0 so that in further iteration, which means in the further round, zero is added to the next element not the negative part by this i will at every stage i will update my prefix i will update my answer i will update my prefix i will update my answer and add finally when the whole loop is complete i will obtain my maximum prefix sum then i will return it so the code is pretty 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 simple like it is only this as you can see that okay i should decrease the size and yeah so i hope that you guys have understood it and i would like highly recommend you to see other youtubers videos and check that they have showed you this intuition like why it actually happened why we transform it to zero why we only had this part and why we had this answer as this so like i'm pretty like you know i had in mind that how they are having so much views and so on and so forth yeah but that's all for this video and if you guys enjoyed it then please do hit the like button and i will see you in the next video until then be happy and keep coding bye